Welcome back, my loyal subjects, to more Extra and Odyssey 5 Beyond the Myth. Feral Fiasco here. Last episode, we got pretty far into the third floor, but then couldn't actually figure out how to proceed. But since then, we've actually done a bit of a, a bit of leveling. You'll see Juniper, Bryce, Polonia, all level 8. Morgan and Nils are level 9. We're not going to immediately jump into assigning skills. We haven't done that just yet. But we are going to go to Twilight Tavern because while grinding, it actually became pretty obvious we have not actually been there. So, best drinks in town. Janetta might have something to say about that. Haven't seen you around before. Uh, this is like another Celestrian, looks like. You new adventurers? Well, welcome to the Twilight Tavern, a hub of sorts for adventurers to take on all manner of requests. Okay, requests, which we have absolutely none of. We've probably killed so much stuff that we've fulfilled several of these already, I'm sure. Um, if we hadn't sold everything, so. I'm Marina, owner of this fine establishment. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Looks like you completed the Council's trial mission. Nice. This tavern assigns requests to adventurers officially recognized by the Council. Since you've already gone and done that, uh, I can send some work your way immediately if you want. Let me tell you all about requests. Essentially, they're side jobs that are given to adventurers. They can range from gathering materials in the labyrinth to exterminating monsters. Depending on the request, they could be a walk in the park or pretty difficult. It's not easy to know up front. I do limit what requests I assign based on how far up Yggdrasil and adventure is explored. In other words, more requests will become available to you the farther you get in the labyrinth. And of course, by completing requests, you'll earn rewards, which is what Ruby Tear is here for, definitely. It's a good way to make some extra money while you're exploring the labyrinth. You can take on quests here in the bar, which are optional jobs or requests, and definitely, hopefully this alleviates our hurting for money. There are many types of quests, each with their own reward. When accepting a quest, select Accept Quests from the menu to see the details. Alright. Which would you like to tackle? Um... Uh, one Cracked Mudstone. We can get that from somewhere, but that'll be pretty easy. Yeah. Taking on that request, huh? <laughs> you kids are hard workers. <laughs> well, listen up while I lay down the job for you. The request comes from the city's craftsmen. He needs you to go mine a cracked mudstone. Yes, there should be one on the first floor. Actually, right, right there. That means finding a few of those mining points spread throughout the labyrinth and digging up some ore. If I remember right, there should be one on 1F, so keep an eye out for it. It'll also help if you take someone with you who's learned the mining skill. Nah, we don't need that. Check and see if anyone knows it before you head into the labyrinth. What'll it be? Which would you like to tackle? Let them eat acorns, hard cupules, or however you pronounce that. But yes, all we have to do is kill uh, those acorn monsters. This one comes from a restaurant in the city. They're short three hard cupules and need someone to get them from the labyrinth. Looks like a monster called Rabbit Acorn drops hard cupules. They're not that strong, but you should still be careful. The labyrinth is perhaps a more dangerous place than you think. <laughs> For what it's worth, it looks like they're going to use the shells you collect to decorate acorn cakes. I mean, be? that's what a good cause like for us to put our lives on the line. Rare Breed Hunter! This request is from the Arcania Council. Defeat a rare breed monster on 2F. See, rare breeds were the, like these golden shining enemies in Extra and Odyssey 4. And we had to kill a lot of monsters to get from level 6 to level 8, but... Haven't seen any of these. Um, we'll not, we won't worry about that just yet. Forest fish. Uh-oh, we can't do that. This request comes from the city apothecary. It's low on skunk cabbage. Request from Cyric, new set of materials. The rewards of Modfa, which were actually already passed. Um, what's, Polonia is rolling with a Hockenbuch right now? Hockenbuse? This one? But... This will probably still give us XP, so hey. And we can sell the modfa, so. That request is from Cyric, the merchant. He's a brony with, uh, or brownie with a street stall at the marketplace. Perhaps you've met him? <laughs> it seems he needs someone to collect materials for the equipment he crafts. 
As for what those materials are, you'll need to ask him directly. He should be at his shop. <laughs> Good luck. Um. Which would you like to tackle? Rare materials for a uh, rare materials for a wedding ring. Forest fish gun cabbage. This one. That request was brought in by a Celestrian gentleman. His name is Thaddeus, I believe. He sounds like uh, sounds like a mission to gather some materials. It might involve that glowing stone we came upon. Hmm. In other words, a fetch quest. But that doesn't mean it's going to be a walk in the park. Ask the client for the specifics. He should be waiting for you here in the tavern right now. Alright. You must be the ones who accepted my request. Thank you ever so much. Now, as for the details, I want you to bring me a sunstone and a moonstone. I've heard that both of these gems can be acquired on 3F of the tutelary forest. According to my research, they emit a mystical power based on the time of day. The sunstone during daylight, the moonstone in the evening. Okay, so there's one of them we have not happened upon just yet then. I realize a diurnal approach may inconvenience you a tad, but I wish you all the best of luck. Okay, so we've pretty much gotten everything we need from Marina We're for now. On you. Let's talk to Cyrix, see what's going on with him. What's up? Welcome! What brings you here today? Oh, you brought the mod for materials? Uh the Celestrian lady didn't tell you? No, she told us to come to you, dude. You've already sold me everything I need to make the mod for myself. So I sent word to the Twilight Tavern that my request was already complete. Guess she didn't get the note in time. Yeah, so we have... We've already done this one pretty much. <laughs> well, that's fine. Anyway, you slice it, a job's a job. Go talk to the Celestrian lady and she'll pass along your reward. Hey! Pleasure yep. Doing business. We are definitely already past that, but we're at least gonna get to see what turning in a reward looks like Welcome. for the tavern, so... Which will it be? <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Now make with the XP already. I received the news from Cyric. He had nothing but nice things to say about your performance. Right. Cyric's wares are quite popular amongst the adventurers infiltrating the labyrinth, so his request was a very important one. Brownie are naturally adept, but he is exceptional even by their standards. A genius among solvents, if you will. As you continue to climb the labyrinth, I'm sure you'll need better equipment. So make sure to sell the materials you find at Cyric's store. That way, he can improve the quality of his goods as he rise higher. But do keep in mind that some materials will be needed for requests. Don't forget. Here's your reward. Well then, you'll be wanting your reward. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks for your hard work. We obtained the modfa. Alright. We're counting on you. Does Cyrix strike you as friendly? Out of the blue, but yeah, unbelievably so. I found it curious that Marina knew his name, but Cyrix didn't seem to know hers. Huh. Makes sense though. Marina's business is being in the know. Cyrix spends hours making stuff. All true. Of all things, this is what catches me off guard. But for now, let's leave and get that glowing stone. Gate. One of those would be like a fully map out this particular section of floor. Oh well. But, we can go ahead and uh, speed through this really quickly. Because once we get to the second floor, oh, we need that cracked mudstone. There we go. Requested item found. Report back to the tavern to turn it in. Now, nah, don't need to do that just yet. Oh, man. Oh, one of the acorns. All right, let me uh, take care of this for us really quickly, guys. Okay. So, Polonia hit level 9, but we have also not summoned Sky and Land to aid us. So, let's, uh, let's jump into our skills really quickly. That's the Hawk Whistle. And the Hound Whistle. Okay, and a healing herb because uh, Juniper definitely took a big hit in that fight. Tutelary Forest around the campfire. And we've gone ahead and um, not mapped out the entirety of it. It looks like we're about 60% of the way. We probably won't be able to get to the other part if this is anything like Extreme Odyssey 4 until like towards the end. 
But we can still walk through here. Lotus fruit. And... Wait, the glowing stone wasn't on floor three? We definitely marked it off, so we're not gonna... We don't have to worry about walking past it. There it is. But we've also gone ahead and marked off the borders of this area as well. Huh, something's there. As you're exploring the forest, you sense an unearthly coolness emanating not unlike mana. Thinking it may be the moonstone that Thaddeus desires, you look around for it but find nothing. Oh, we can't identify it during the daytime. If you recall correctly, the moonstone is said to emit a lunar glow, but only during nighttime. Perhaps you'd be able to find it under the light of the moon. For now, you return to exploring. Alright. That's fine. Because, um, probably should have marked it off a bit better. But there are two, uh, places here that, while marking everything down, we walked over but didn't actually check out. The sunstone is probably this one. That one right there. Oh! And we're about to get our the rest of our cracked, uh, cracked nuts. So, one second, guys. Alright, easy. Oh, we only got one cracked nut? That kind of sucks, but oh well. Here we go. First, let's check out what this is. Yeah, definitely should have picked something else to uh, mark this off. Oh, really? I promise you guys there was something there. The first... Oh! This, act, uh, this set of enemies we were actually able to defeat. And then that's um the creepy brawler or whatever it is. Whatever item they give you um is actually what Bryce currently has equipped. Skills. Oh no. Bryce. We need to arm crusher them because otherwise we're going to take some hits we seriously don't want to. But the key part of winning this particular fight is actually letting the tur uh, tortoises just be. Let them- oh! They're not gonna be able to fuse! Alright. Kinda sucks, but uh... I don't know. I guess there's no more point showing this fight. Alright. We were able to get Bryce up to level 9 as well. Last but not least is gonna be- there it is! Okay. As you continue through the familiar verger, you notice a worn out bag dangling from the branch of an old tree a little further up ahead. Okay, so this is not the sunstone. The tallest person in your guild would barely be able to reach it, but a strap is caught on the tree, hidden behind leaves and branches. If you tugged at the branch holding the strap, the bag might shake out of the tree and fall to the ground. Uh... I mean, we might as well reach up and tug the bag. Whatever's in the bag, you know you want it. Morgan nods and approaches. Morgan? Does that mean Morgan is supposed to be taller? Like, like, it's pretty clear that whoever does these things is chosen at random, but I would have thought Bryce was taller than Morgan. Guess not. Morgan reaches up to brush some branches and leaves aside, but a moment later, they give a sharp yell and pull back their hand. Morgan loses 30 HP. Wow. Carefully pulling the branch, Juniper unveils that the leaves around the strap are infested with green, writhing larvae. They appear to be the larval form of the Toxipede known for its powerful toxins. Presumably, no one had taken this bag before because they'd seen the danger. You offer some comfort to Morgan, who is blowing on their swollen hand while flicking away the larvae to get at the bag. Lo and behold, there's a silver coin inside it! Hey, not all bad! Obtain Celestial Silver. Oh, we might need this for that, uh, ring! After placing the hard-won loot into your backpack, you return to your exploration. Alright. An abandoned bag turned out to be covered in Toxipede larva. Uh, there's no telling when danger might strike in the labyrinth. Dude, something always happens with these freaking things. Um... Larva strike, or larva bag. Alright. I mean, that's only for the future, because clearly we can't do that event a second time. Yep. There we go. And then from here, we actually need to travel to the far side. That's the only section of this place we haven't really explored just yet. 
And if you'll notice, we also marked off the, um... There's something at the very end of that long stretch of, uh, wait. Oh, this will get us there. We might want to... Nah. As long as everybody believes we'll be able to get through this without an encounter. Alright! We all believed hard enough and it happened. Um... But we're probably about to get an encounter, uh... Anytime now. Yeah. Alright, another one of these bad boys. Crap, dude. At the very least, Juniper is dying less often. Skills. Thanks. I'm in your debt. Thanks. Alright. And slowly but surely, she's actually um, getting a TP pool to work with after everybody's been summoned, so... Baby steps. As you're exploring the forest, you sense an unnatural warmth emanating, not unlike mana. All right. Oh, oh well, we should still mark it off, even though this one we're going to be able to pick up. You recollect the request from Thaddeus the Celestrian to bring him back a sunstone. That fiery energy you felt just a moment ago had to have come from a sunstone. When you take a more meticulous look around the era, uh, area, you find an orange-colored gem amid the other small stones as if it had been hiding. As you pick it up, it's warm to the touch. This gem must be the sunstone Thaddeus wants. Yeah! There were two stones specified in the request. The remaining moonstone is believed to emit a mysterious power under the light of the moon. You return to your exploration in search of the Moonstone to complete this request. Alright. We already know where the Moonstone's at, we just can't get it right now. These guys we can get, though. Nice! Alright. Now that everybody's level 9, let's take a look at our uh, skills really quickly. Or, uh, rather, our custom menu. Um... Instant range stab to one enemy... TP cost, so we can do that a grand total of once. Still not worth it just yet. Um, heal rate up. I guess rank five would be nice for this. We've got four skill points, so. Okay. Okay. And then aid command. Yeah. Alright, so that's it for her. Brawl Mastery. Alright. We can get this to... No, we need Low Blow. Good. And now we can get Good. this up, too. This just increases their attack and not their infliction rate. Yep. Arm buying chances until rank 5, so... Forget that. Good. Next up, what? Raises the party's physical defense for three turns. Yeah! Let's do it! Indeed. Defense up. Indeed. Healing guard. For one turn, user takes less physical damage and recovers HP when hit. Healing guard is probably going to come in real handy. Oh. Wow! There's damage reduction all the way up to rank 5. Dang, probably should have looked at that first. Uh, Morgan raises the elemental attack of one ally line for three turns. Once we get subclassing, this is going to be pretty useful, if there even is subclassing in this game, but there probably should be, or something akin to it, maybe. But, for right now, she'd only be buffing her own, um, attack. Let's, um... Fireball is the one we're getting the most use out of at the moment. There we go. Good. Toxic smoke and dark smoke. Mm. Restores HP to one line. Got it. Got it. Uh, Got it. yes please. Got it. There you go. Alright! Now we're working with some real power too. But, <laughs> having the skills is great and all, but the TP to actually make use of them would be better. 
All right. Oh. Do we have... All right, it's the regular crowd. Got him. All right. We can mark this off. The door before you is sealed shut by some mysterious power. All right. Some sort of key. Hmm. That is not good. Now we're kind of back in the same spot. Because it's not 100% clear how we're supposed to proceed. Um... Okay, let's try heading over to that particular area in the bottom right where Janetta's at. Wait. Oh. Yeah, I can't get through either of those spots. Dang, and thought we were onto something for a second. Uh. Oh, there is a door. Okay, and it's right, um, it's near the bag. Oh. Completely forgot about that. Okay, we're gonna make our way over to that thing then. Okay, and we're back from killing monsters. It must lead into that room with the uh, owl FOE, but be a route we can actually take to get through. Okay, so the door, and there, there's a door and a uh, golem. So if we, hold on, first let's step out of the room so we can <laughs> not get an encounter while this thing is chasing us. That would be bad. All right. And it must be like the thing that allows the um, boar enemies to use their attacks, it must be their legs because we've had Bryce bind their head and arms to no avail as far as not getting like completely jacked up. Um. So, if you guys will notice, we actually were able to get the Hamal, I think it was. The Hamal that's right there. So, if the pattern follows, we should be able to check this without it moving one uh, space closer to us. So, let's see if that holds up. Sure does. When you push over the stone statue, a loud noise echoes from elsewhere in the forest. Uh, okay... Mm. Is that? Those look more like grave markers to me. Alright, let's just roll with that for now. Alright, is there... Anything else? There's a door over there. Hmm... That doesn't look like the door that we... No, it must be. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's not worry about it for right now. There we go. And... What's back here? Oh, another one! Uh... Nice! It's a nice bit of progress we just made. Uh, now we just have to get out of here without getting destroyed. Oh, okay, nice. Whew. Or, let's uh, let's live a little bit dangerously and see if we can make it. Uh, oh, it doesn't look like that actually goes anywhere. Oh, but that's fine. At least we know. Um, yeah. Whoops, that's not right. Alright, cool. So let's get the heck out of here and see what we can explore next. Um... Oh, dang, yeah, definitely. Oh, the closed doors are what we've been using. Oh. Uh, let's see if this one's... Yup, this one's changed. 
So what's... Oh, this doesn't look like it's a way to proceed forward, but that's okay. As you wander throughout the labyrinth, and we saw a golem to our right, as you wander throughout the labyrinth, you discover some golden fruits hanging from the branches of the tree before you. For all you know, however, these fruits might not even be edible. None of you are skilled at foraging, so the safe option is to leave it be. Dang, we might need to tag Laurel in pretty soon. Um... Hmm... The carrot is probably the symbol for foraging, so... Uh. There we go. We're getting a lot of stuff this episode, which is always good. Want to make sure we walk over everything. Yeah. Alright. So that, um, with these three things being activated, that should be pretty much everything on this floor. And we're about to hit nighttime, so a bit longer we'll be able to pick up that other item we're gonna need. But, as you guys can see, Morgana's actually pretty spent, so we might, we might need to peace out. We'll see. Got him. And it is 4 p.m. in game at the moment. Alright, so let's head this away. Oh no, it'll be way way more expedient to go this way. Got Ivy Bark. And maybe there's um actually a pass back. Yep! That's definitely open when it wasn't before. Oh no! I think probably looking at the wrong thing. Oh uh, yeah, let's not worry about that. Oh, this is just to that item box. Hmm. Oh, two item boxes. Nice. Hopefully. Oh, uh, probably. Yeah, we don't have the resources to fight this one. Luckily, Juniper is fairly fleet of foot. This one has a memory conch. Uh. Item. Inventory, I guess. A conch that records audio shares EXP with non-active guild members. Wow! That's different. While exploring, you come across a large box. Obtain Volt Jar. Alright. But the thing is, who do we give the memory conch to? Uh... Her, her thingamabobs drop, kinda. 22 to 28. Alright. Yeah, let's give it to Morgan. Morgan dies fairly rarely, and Laurel could use it. Yep, marked that completely incorrectly. Alright. So where else can we explore? Or actually, we should just run back and uh run around back and forth in front of the stone. And then we'll just be able to take it to where we're trying to get it to. So uh, one second guys, it might take a, a second. Nice! And having animal therapy at rank 5 does a way better job. People are healing 9 or 10 a turn. So if you don't get attacked, then you'll be, uh, be back at full health pretty much, like, fairly quickly. Yep, unearthly coolness. It reminds you of Thaddeus the Celestrian's request to bring him back a moonstone. That frosty energy you felt just a moment ago had to have come from a moonstone. When you take a more meticulous look around the area, you find a white, semi-translucent uh, semi gem twinkling from the bottom of a shadowy puddle. As you pick it up, it's cool to the touch. This must be the Moonstone Thaddeus requested. Alright. Both of the Mystic Stones have been gathered. All that remains is to bring them to the tavern in order to complete the Celestrian's request. 
All right, and now with our heads held high, we can head back downstairs, turn in these requests, come back, and we should be done with the third floor when we get back. So uh, let me run back to the tavern for us really quickly, guys. Oh, that's cool. A quest can be reported. That's one way to remind you. Twilight Tavern. Welcome. And then... What do we need? Three hard cube pools. How do we not have three? We killed so many of them. <laughs> Thank you. Got the one cracked mudstone. We probably... Let's actually review those, because we probably have to talk to other people and let them know before we can come back to Marina. Back so soon? My, you're well on your way to becoming wonderful adventurers. I'll hang on to what the requester asked for. Don't worry, I'm not going to steal it. I'll be handing it over to them myself. I suspect you'll come across a lot of jobs like this one, with someone requesting that a specific item be gathered. <laughs> if you come across a request for a rare ore, you might be unable to obtain it until one of your guildmates learns more mining skills. Same goes for collecting or chopping other materials. Certain rare items call for specific skills. Remember that. Well, I suppose I should hand over your reward. Well done. Here you go. Thanks for all your hard work. Hope to see you taking on more requests. Nice! And then, patrons. Talk to Thaddeus. Welcome back. I'm glad to see you all are safe. Now then, did you manage to procure both the Sunstone and the Moonstone? Yep, handed over both the Sunstone and the Moonstone. So these are what the Sunstones and Moonstones look like. How beautiful. It's no wonder they are rumored to promise eternal happiness. Uh, excuse me. You see, there is an old legend about these gems. If you craft a wedding band from a Sunstone and a Moonstone, Bliss shall forever uh, be forever yours, or so the stories say. <clears throat> Pardon me for making this personal, but I'm actually planning on getting married. Thanks to you, I can finally make it happen. All that's left is for me to hire a jeweler to fashion these into our wedding bands. I cannot thank you enough for your help. And of course, my betrothed and I would love to invite you all to our wedding. <laughs> so save the date. <laughs> all right. What'll it be? There we go. Making lives better one request at a time, all in a day's work for Ruby Tear. A custom wedding ring, hmm? How romantic. I wonder if I should try my hand at crafting up some accessories of my own. Hmm. Uh, do you want to get married soon? Huh? Oh, is that a proposal? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I should give you your reward first. Well done. Thanks for taking care of this one. Keep up the good work, but don't push yourselves too hard. Nice! Oh! Now that you've reached level 10, new race skills have unlocked! Uh, quest... No. What'll it be? What was, um... Which will it be? From a restaurant. What the heck? Book... In the book menu, you can view any accepted or completed quests and missions. You may also view your collection of guild cards here. With the Monstrous Codex and Item Compendium, viewing discovered monsters and items is also possible. Uh, quests. Collect three hard cupules. Oh, and bring them to the tavern. Wait. We must not have three then. Items. Inventory. Oh, hard cube pools. Oh, they're different from cracked nuts. Okay. We can, Cyric is probably going to say something to us about not accidentally We're selling their quest items to him. We won't, but... Welcome. What are you selling? Oh, nothing. Oh, let's hang on to that celestial silver as well. Thorny vine. Nope. All right, so for now, we're going to go ahead, heal up at Janetta's Inn, and then we're going to run right back into the, um, whatchamacallit, run right back into the labyrinth. That's all going to be next time, though, so definitely join me then for more Exion Odyssey 5 Beyond the Myth. Bye for now, guys.
Center.